Hello she fans and welcome to Get Ready With Me but it's 80-ish AD. Um, so today I've got some replica objects of some everyday items from Roman Celtic Britain and we're going to pretend we're getting ready. Um, that's why I've said 80-ish because they're not all specifically from a year but it's just like when the Romans were invading Britain but people still have their Celtic things. That was a very long-winded intro for something that didn't need to be that long so let's just get into it. <laughs> so of course we wake up and firstly go and have a shower and clean ourselves and in the Roman Empire they did as well. Most people would have bathed every day because they liked to be clean. If you were wealthy you would have your own um, bath but they also had public bathhouses that even the wealthy would frequent because bathing was seen as a social activity. Now their water was heated and the water um, came, well, some of the water was heated. The water came from the fancy aqueduct system that the Romans very cleverly invented and brought over here and they also heated some of the water and the flooring with their hypercourse system which was their system of underfloor heating with a big fire and then flutes that went under the floor. Very smart. Sometimes people would scratch curses into metal tablets and throw them into the water, especially um, at the baths in Bath. That's because that one's dedicated to the goddess Sulis, it's called the Aquae Sulis, um, because they believed her power came from or was held in the water. And they also believed that the naturally warm bubbly springs of water there held powers too, so they'd throw their curses in. Um, to get the goddess to help them out and make the curses happen. And they also went to the baths to be cured of illnesses and diseases or even to just stop being sad and for that they would give gifts or offerings to the goddess and that's why again at Bath they find a lot of Roman coins in the water. And this object here is called a strigil or a strigil depending on who you ask. Mostly strigil I believe. Now before you get in a bath you would have someone pour oil all over you and then this is used to scrape away all the dirt like this get all the dirt off of you and then you'd get in the bath to wash it all away. So that's a striggle. And in the similar area to the public baths we have public toilets and this is a tersorium which is what people used as their hygiene tool or to wipe their bottoms and in a public loo it would have been shared. Public loos were just big long benches with holes in and these were in buckets of water. Now to get dressed. So when you think of Romans fashion you probably think of big togas, especially the big white ones with the purple lining that were worn by youths or rising magist magistrates. <laughs> but here in Roman Britain they were merged with the Celtic tradition so what I've got are examples of what they would wear here in Roman Britain which is more Celtic than Roman. But there would have been a lot of togas too. But purple was very expensive so I'm not sure I would have been rich enough to wear this colour. And I'm sure you've all heard that purple was specifically um, reserved only the, for the empress to wear, only emperors could wear it. But then I saw a video that said purple um, was actually quite commonly worn over here. So let me know if you know if purple was allowed or not. In Celtic Britain, they did, well, in Celtic Roman Britain, they did wear a lot of colours. Maybe like this one, maybe not. This, they're all replica objects, so they did wear a lot of colours though. Um, they wore trousers, which were called brachii, um, and they were worn underneath these tunics, which are just these big T-shaped things. And these were worn by the men, and they would then wear a belt as well. And I've chosen the pink one, because I think it's pretty. Um, and they may well have had purpley pinky wool, because wool was quite easy to dye, and they did have access to all the different fruits and berries and vegetables to make coloured wool. They also wore cloaks fastened with brooches, um, but this is a summer linen tunic and it's quite cold so I'm going to switch to wool, so I'll be back. So now we are dressed a bit more appropriately for Celtic Roman Britain, but also for women because women would have worn long skirts or long dresses made of wool and then they would have either worn a shawl or a cloak over the top. Well, and most of their cloaks were um, striped or checkered patterns like this one and like we said before they were dyed a lot of colours because they would use vegetables, berries or other plants to make their colours and then the wool was woven on a standing upright loom by hand. They wore jewellery made from bronze, silver or gold or even coral or enamel and important people 
wore these. This is a talk or a neck ring basically and it's worn by important people like nobles, warriors or chieftains so I'm channeling my inner boudicca today um, and I've got a little matching bracelet as well. And they would have worn other types of necklaces as well like um, the poorer in society might have worn things made of um, just glass beads, simple, or the wealthier would have worn pearls or emerald necklaces. But this, this is really cool. Now this is a key ring. It's not the key to your house. The key to your house would be a big clunky key that you kept on your belt. This key is for a little box that contains all your precious things. Um, it's, um, I'm going to try and hang on, focus. I'm not going to focus. You can see it though. It's um, less easy to steal than the big key you would have had on your belt um, and especially if you wear it this way round then it's not going to get stolen as easily and you can keep all your things safe. Clever right? If it fits, it doesn't quite fit this one. <laughs> oh well. You get the idea. Now beauty wise, um, I do have a few objects here but we're going to go back to the scrunched Striggle for a second and because arguably it's part of your skincare because the oil that was used is good for cleansing and exfoliating your skin. Now trends did exist in well throughout all of history but in the Roman Empire as well even though they didn't have um, beauty vloggers like Zoella like we do. Um, they would have seen their trends through imagery especially on their coins. Now coins are really important for historians because we can see the hairstyles that women had at the time. And one particular trendsetter is the, I think she's an empress, um, Julia Domna, um, and she was famous for having big dark eyes and eyebrows, and that is a trend that we see all throughout the Roman Empire when she is predominant. This is falling off and it's kind of hurting, so I'm just going to hold it. So firstly, they would use the grease from sheep's wool as their moisturiser, it's called lanolin, and it was quite good because it does contain some of, some of the same ingredients that we look for in our moisturisers that are good for our skin but it did smell and there's a few um, stories from history where men have written down um, their complaints about their daughters and their wives faces smelling of the grease. Now this is a cosmetics grinder believed to be exclusive to Roman Britain. Um, previously they were called lunate pendants and were thought to just be a part of a necklace. Um, they wouldn't have been attached, they would have just been a loop like this which is why you would think maybe they're a pendant for a necklace. Um, but they're not, they are cosmetics grinders. They first appear in the first century and are believed to have been created or invented as a way of um, keeping up with all these new beauty ideas that are coming over from the Mediterranean. And it's essentially a pestle and mortar, so in this side, to make a coal or an eyeliner, you would put charcoal or soot or maybe antimony with a drop of oil and then you grind it up and then you conveniently use this part of it to put it on your eye. I'm not going to attempt it because these are used in learning sessions and I haven't cleaned them and I don't want to put it on my eye. <laughs> but you can see how they would work because um, this side, this bit is really really thin so it would perfectly go and make your little eyeliner. And there's also evidence that women um, throughout the Roman Empire wore bright eyeshadow and they would have made that again with a little bit of oil or fat and then would grind up maybe malachite or azurite or saffron and that's where you, there's evidence of really bright blue eyes as well. And if you wanted some makeup for your lips and cheeks you would mix vermilion with beeswax. And this is kind of a mystery object but I believe you would grind any of those like eyeshadows, lipsticks, um, blushes, <laughs> couldn't think of the word, um, in here and then you store it in here so it's like a little grinder and a storage. I'm not sure about that though, that's what one of the teachers told me at work. And we also have a little beauty set. Now it's um, like this because they would have kept it um, either on their brooch or attached to their belt um, because being hairless was very very desirable so you would always need your tweezers. How cool is that though? Like we literally haven't changed, they look the same as our tweezers. And then we have some nail cleaners to clean underneath your nails and also clean your cuticles if you want to. And this tiny little spoon, tiny tiny, is to scoop out your ear wax. Stay clean people. Now hair wise, throughout the Roman Empire big hairstyles were popular and wigs would have been used um, so that you didn't have to do your hair all the time, you could just put a wig on. 
um, but it's up until the 4th century. Um, it's So the 4th century is when Christianity started to come to the forefront, so women became more modest and they would cover up their hair instead. But before then, they liked big elaborate hairstyles. And we know this because one of the biggest finds on historical sites are hairpins. Um, so their hairstyles would have involved lots of plaits and um, a popular one is four plaits and they then sort of sew it, sew it up and it ends up sort of looking like this at the front and they would sew it so it could last you for a good few days which is really clever. Pull it out a bit, that'll do. <laughs> Thank you all for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that jazz. I wouldn't recommend a talk people, it kind of hurts, it's just heavy. I'm obviously not important enough to be worthy of wearing one of these. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'll see you soon, <laughs> bye!